Hey guys, it's me, Troy Dillinger, and it is uh, New Year's, the first day of the year. It is officially 2024, and I'm going to be talking about um, how to um, spiritually have a uh, successful New Year, um, and the key word is spiritually. Um, I'm not here to tell you that, you know, when the new year hat comes, you're going to be happy, that you're going to get a bunch of money, and that you're going to uh, be, you know, live in comfort, and uh, nothing bad's going to happen to you, and all these good things are going to happen to you, you know, I'm not, I'm not here to tell you that, but, you know, I am here to tell you how you can have a successful uh, new year uh, spiritually, and, and, and how that, how do, um, really achieve your goals in the spiritual sense um, in following God's will and, and, the, and God's direction for your life um, I'm here to tell you how, you, how you're going how you can attain those goals um, and most importantly salvation um, the title of this video is called uh, new year new you and um, basically I'm just going to be talking about um, all about uh, being born again um, I, I want to start off with a scripture here that is found in Revelation 21, uh, verse, okay, I'm going to start here in verse 5, and it says right here, and he that sat upon the throne said, behold, I make all things new, and he said unto me, right, for these, th for these words are true and faithful. Okay, so this is God speaking, and you know, God is um, creating uh, the new heaven and the new earth, and and, and um, we we see this all throughout the Book of Revelation, and God says, you know, He will make a new heaven and a new earth, um, a completely um, different world than this world. It, it is a world, you know, that is without suffering, without sickness, without. Um, death without uh, uh, sin and um, it, it is uh, heaven it is paradise and it is uh, a new earth and um, you know th this will be in the uh, end times um, a world that will um, be free from all things from all things that are corrupt and you know if you're going to enter into this world and if you're going to go into heaven um, you know there's not going to be any sin in heaven and there's not going to be any sinners in heaven, and but God said He will make all things new, and and not only does He make all things new uh, with the new heaven and the new earth, but He also makes uh, all things new in the spiritual sense that He um, gives us a, a a new nature, and 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 you know we become born again, and we and we become a new person if we get saved, um, so. So I just wanted to point that out, and I'm going to look at a couple other scriptures here. Just one moment. So I'm going to be uh, looking at a scripture that is found here in Titus, uh, verse 3, uh, 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Now, I want to take a look at this chapter here in context. Um, uh, or do I need to, or does this sum it up? Yeah, I think this pretty much sums it up. Okay, so never mind. Um, but, again, you know, it, it speaks here about regeneration. And, and regeneration and being born again, it, it comes hand in hand. And people talk about wanting to drop bad habits. They talk about, you know, wanting to get their life changed, wanting to get their life cleaned up. And, you know, all that's fine. But, you know, I'm basically here to tell you, you know, how to knock it all out at once and, um, and, and benefit spiritually all of it. Because many of you guys, you're dropping bad habits. And you might do it for, you know, a little while but you're, you're not really benefiting off of it spiritually. You're not saved. You're not uh, going to heaven. But if you do this, not only will you clean your life up, but you know, you'll, you'll, you'll go to heaven. And I'm talking about having a new nature, having a new heart and new desires, 
which is what it talks about uh, here in um, Ezekiel 23, verse 26. I mean, I mean, being born again, you know, it's the greatest experience you'll ever have in your life. And, and, and most importantly, you know, you got to be born again to go into heaven because Jesus said in John 3, verse 3, that unless a man is born again, he shall not see the kingdom of God. You know, born, becoming born again means that, well, it, it goes hand in hand with regeneration. It, it's the same thing. It's, it's, you know, becoming born of God. It's um, a, a, attaining a new nature. And there's, and, and it's when uh, you put away your old man and put on the new man. And, you know, the Bible talks about the flesh and the Bible talks about the spirit. And, you know, the flesh is the sinful desires, the evil desires of the heart. And, um, and you're either living in the flesh or you're living in the spirit. The Bible says those that live, those that live according to the flesh, they shall die, which means you will spiritually die, which means that, you know, you're, you're going to be heading to hell. Um, so, you know, the, the key to getting saved, to have, to be born again is to, uh, spiritually speaking, crucify those evil desires, uh, your old man, the flesh and put on the new man. And there's Bible verses that talk about that. I'm going to check out those verses here in just a moment. Okay, so it says here, um, starting here in verse 24 of, uh, no, actually, scratch that, verse 22 of Ephesians, Ephesians 4. Um, I'm going to check out the scripture here. And it says that you put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness okay so here we're instructed to put away the old man the flesh and put on the new man okay um so you know like I said, so if you're not born again, you're not saved, you're not going to go to heaven. So this is something that is very important that we understand. Um, and, and, you know, the key to being born again is to uh, crucify the flesh. And we crucify the flesh through repentance, which means that you got to stop sinning, which means that you need to turn away from uh, your sins. Um, so let's talk, let's take a look at some Bible verses of what it talks about, about, you know, what it means to be born again. Okay, so it says here in Second Corinthians five seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things are become new. So, again, everything is passed away. Your old life, your old lifestyle, your sins, all of that's put away. You know, you, you have a whole new clean slate, um, and you're a new creature. You're you're a whole new person. You're not just a reformed person, but you're you are a completely uh, you have a completely new nature. Okay, you, you have the uh, divine nature of God. Um, and let's take a look at another scripture here that I would like to check out. Uh, this might actually be uh, one of the most controversial verses in the Bible because you know, let's just take a look at it right here. First John three nine through ten. Whoever, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, for he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Well, you know, the Bible is very clear here that, you know, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, and there's so many people who they say, well, you know, well, I sin every day, or, or we all sin, we're all sinners, but... Uh, you know, the Bible says that if you're not, if you commit sin, you're not born of God. Uh, because, you know, God has no sin. So if you're born of God, you don't have any sin. Um, because you, you have that uh, nature. Um, so, you know, it, it, it says here in this very Bible. So if you're, if you're a sinner, if you're, uh, if you have sin in your life and you're, and you're continuing to uh, live in sin or, a willful rebellion against God. Well, then the Bible says that you're not born. You're not born of God. You're not born again because you're not a new creature. Um, and, and we might make mistakes sometimes. And I'm not saying that we don't. Um, 
you know, I, I've made mistakes and, and everything like that. But, you know, like I said, if, if you're committing uh, a Christian, you know, if they fall into sin, you know, they repent and, and they um, and they don't repeat it and, and they, they don't and they don't do it again. OK. Um, and, and they don't commit uh, intentional sin willfully on purpose and they don't try to justify it. Um, but, um, that's what this uh, verse is talking about here that, you know, um, if you're, you know, still living in sin and, and you, or if you commit sin, um, that you're not saved and, and that you need to examine your salvation because, you know, you're not born again. The Bible says that, uh, those that sin are the children of the devil because, you know, Satan, uh, is the father of sin. So some other script, uh, verses that you might want to check out is Ezekiel 23 verse 30 verse, verse 26 not 36 uh, and I'll, I'll just leave talk to you about all the references here uh, Titus 3 verse 5 1 John 3 9 through 10 um, John 3 1 John 5 uh, verse 4 and Ephesians 4 24 Galatians 2 verse 20 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, Romans 6, verse 6, 1 Peter uh, 1, 23, uh, John 3, verse 3, you know, uh, 1 Peter 1, verse 23 is another uh, Bible verse that talks about uh, being born again, and 1 John 5, uh, talks about you know overcoming another thing that the Bible says um, that those that are born of God overcome so you know a, 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 a child of God is an overcomer and if you don't overcome you're not a child of God the Bible says that uh, we have to endure to the end you know conversion is just the beginning uh, we also have to continue to follow Christ um, the Bible says those that are led by the Spirit of God they are the children of God so we have to continually walk by the Spirit um, and if we uh, go back into sin, we will uh, go to hell. Um, and the Bible says that uh, we, we have to continue to follow the, uh, Christ on a day-by-day -day basis. Um, and we have to overcome and we have to endure to the end or, you know, we will um, you know what will happen. Um, so those are a couple of verses, and a lot of people, they're not born again, you know, they, they profess to have a faith in Jesus Christ, but they, they, they say that they believe Jesus and they die on the cross, but they're still in sin, and they're still justifying sin, which is evidence of a false conversion, but, you know, there's people that, um, all over the world that have professed Christ, and there's people that have left false religions, and, and, you know, there is power and testimonies, okay, you know, the Bible, the New Testament, was written by the Apostle Paul, and um, you know he was a Pharisee that killed Christians, but he found Jesus Christ and he got saved. Um, another thing that is important to understand, you know, you know this is. Uh, Obviously, the world is not 2,024 years old. Uh, this is based on the Gregorian calendar. Um, and, you know, it's just a measurement to, to, to keep track of time. Um, you know, the Bible says that, you know, we're, we are, we're in the last days. We've, we've been in the, in the last days since the New Testament era. Um, and that's what last days means. Last days means we live, we're living in the New Testament uh, time period. And um, and the Bible says to follow the New Covenant because, you know, the Old Covenant is no longer there. So, well, it's there, but it's not, we're not under the laws of the Old Covenant. We're under the uh, laws of the New Covenant. And um, we, we have to follow that covenant. And so that is pretty much all I wanted to cover. And, you know, thanks for watching. Happy New Year.